Hey, good afternoon. It's Saturday, July 20th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. So great to uh, be with you here today. Trying to uh, beat the storm again. We Lord held off the rain just yesterday, just again and after before the downpour started. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be able to <coughs> do that again today. Today, I want to talk to you about maybe replacing a common phrase that we hear, a common saying, with another one. I'd like to replace the phrase, make America great again, MAGA, with the phrase, may America repent again, Mara. Replace MAGA with Mara. We can look at the state of our country and totally understand why there needs to be a change. But from God's perspective, and that's the only one that really matters, change will occur on the condition of repentance. His grace obviously underlies that. But it's not about desiring to make ourselves great again. Are we going to be broken before the Lord of the universe? Be, be humble, be poor in spirit, and turn to a path of repentance instead of a path of trying to please ourselves, trying to make ourselves great. When God's the only one that makes people great. There's a story, true story, in the book of Jonah. I'm going to read the third chapter for you because I believe it very much ties and connects with where we are right now in the United States and perhaps other places in uh, our civilization. Listen to chapter 3 of Jonah. It's not very long. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Maybe we could view go to the great country of America and proclaim the message that God gives us. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through all of it. Jonah, Jonah started into the city going a day's journey and he proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. The Ninevites believed God and they declared a fast and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, sat down in the dust, and then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man, beast, herd, or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. See, this is a path of repentance. The king is aware of the greatness of God. You can be sure this is not Israel, folks. They're not, their gods are not the God of Israel. But they knew who the real God was, just like everybody that we deal with in this country, whether they claim to know him or not. Romans 1 tells us that God has made himself plain to everyone. Turning away from the ways of God is a way of rebellion. That's where our country is. We have turned from God. And God has made himself known by his mighty acts, by his power, by his power in the weather all around us. There's no denying his presence. So Jonah didn't worry about trying to say, hey, your God's not this, or you know, I'm going to give you a new theology or a new way of looking at things. He just proclaimed God and that you all got to turn from your evil. And they responded. Then verse 10, when God saw that th what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. Turning from evil ways is what the Bible means by repentance. 
if we begin down this road of repentance ourselves, praying for repentance for our country, to turn from the ways that are known to be clearly evil and wrong, there is hope for us. So that's why I'm saying not make America great again, but may America repent again. May we turn as a country from honoring ourselves, from honoring our desires, from honoring the selfishness that is so evident, from honoring the wishes of people and every kind of false God, denying the true living God. May we turn from that. May there indeed be repentance. And if we as God's people start praying for that, start living a life of repentance, calling others to repentance, not in some haughty fashion, but in the way that is laid out here, who knows, God may turn from his fierce anger. We have not, as a country, positioned ourselves to be in a place where we're honoring God. My dad went to war in World War II and he was given a book by the United States government, Armed Forces, endorsed by the president, which essentially said, hey, if you don't make it back, you need to be able to be right with God. In 1944, the President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, called upon the God of Heaven to protect and ensure victory for our troops at D-Day. It's not been that long. Let's pray for repentance. Let's live for repentance. Let's embrace Mara. May America repent again. And that alone is the true path to freedom to walking with God and to trusting Him. So that's the thought for uh, this day. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. This is so important for us. May God cause us to repent as a nation and within our own hearts. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday. You have a great weekend and I pray a good day of worship tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you.